Are you interested in using AI to generate realistic, cool, stylized, weird images like these ones here? Well, that's what I'm gonna talk about in this video using Mid Journey AI. Hey everybody, in today's video, we're gonna take a look at how to use an AI algorithm called Mid Journey to generate images that we can use for marketing or even just to further develop our marketing ideas. We're gonna take a look at Mid Journey, which is just one of many image generating algorithms available. I'm gonna talk about how to sign up for the tool, how to write your first prompt, and how to use this technology in your marketing plan. Mid Journey was created in a research lab in San Francisco, and it is just one of the algorithms on the market that can do this type of work, but as of the making of this video, it is regarded as one of the best. Competitors would be OpenAI's DALI algorithm, Stable Diffusion, and more and more are popping up every single day. The really cool thing about algorithms like this is you become the creative director. So your vision is what the algorithm brings back to you. Now it's on you to understand how to express your vision in your words to get the algorithm to give you what you're looking for. As it says in the definition here, you become the supervisor and the controller instead of the means of production. Does using Midjourney cost money? Well, no and yes, but in short, yes. So to get the most out of what I'm about to explain, you're gonna need to plan to spend about $20. You can use it for free, but it is quite limiting and we'll take a look at that in a minute. To follow along with this video, you're going to need a Discord account, your credit card, a little bit of imagination, and a touch of patience. So here I am at midjourney.com, but before I can get to using the software, I need to install an app called Discord. Discord is basically just another messaging app, very similar to Slack or Microsoft Teams or any of the other messaging apps that are on the market. Since Midjourney is in beta, the only way to interact with their API as of this video is to chat with it in a Discord channel. You can download the app and have it run on your computer, or you can just open it in the and interact with Midjourney there. Since I feel as though I already have too many messaging apps running in the background of my computer, I'm just gonna use it in the browser. So I'm gonna click here and create an account. You can do the same, or you can download the app and create an account from there. Now that I've set up Discord, I can come back to the Mid Journey site and click the Join the Beta button. This brings up a link to a Discord community, and this is where we will start to interact with the algorithm. So I'll accept the invite, and now I'm inside of the Mid Journey community. As you can see, there's all kinds of chats and info down the left-hand side here, and to be honest, it can be a little bit overwhelming. If you're feeling overwhelmed, I can tell you the best way to alleviate that is to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And if you're feeling rich, buy me a coffee via the link below. There's the rules channel here that you need to pay attention to as if you do try to generate gore or porn or any of the words that it deems inappropriate, you could get bumped from the server. So make sure to understand what is and isn't possible with this algorithm. Midjourney is available in all of these chats by typing a command in the chat window. So if you scroll down the left-hand side here, you'll see a bunch of generally named rooms. And if you click into any one of them, you'll see a lot of different types of images being generated. Now, when you first start your account, you do get a little bit of free processing time. So this is where you can test different prompts and see what other people are generating publicly. As I said, all of the interactions with the algorithm happen in the chat box and you do that by typing slash and you'll see a list of possible commands come up. I can imagine, which is how we create. I can adjust the settings, look at my personal info or subscribe. So let's write our first prompt. Imagine a glue stick with a face chatting on a phone. And then you hit enter. Now when you're using these public channels, your message can get lost in the mix. So you have to kind of scroll to find it. You'll see here, this is mine. Since I've used up all the processing time on this account, I've received this message telling me that I need to pay for more time. Now, once you've done your first couple queries, you're going to see this too. If it was your first prompt, you would see what you typed in, plus four examples of what Midjourney generated for you. From there, the interface continues to happen in the chat, 
where you have four buttons with U's, which means upscale or make it nicer, and V's, which gives you more versions of that image. And it goes one, two, three, four. So if I wanted to make a version of this one, I would click V3 and it would regenerate four examples based on that image. However, I need to pay. And to do that, I'm just gonna type a slash and then subscribe. Midjourney will return a link to my personalized subscription page. So I'll just click the button. Discord will give you a warning telling you you're being taken out of the app, but that in this case is okay as it is to midjourney.com. Click the button again, and you're brought to your subscription billing options. They do employ some tricky tactics out of the box. It starts on yearly billing, so if you don't wanna commit for a year yet, click monthly and it shows you the price is 10 bucks. Now you're paying for minutes of access to the fast processing servers, so the number of images you're gonna get for any one of these price points will vary. As you can see here, it says 200 generations per month. I had the $10 plan, I did 380, but not all of them were upscaled, and when you upscale an image or make it full res, it does take a little more processing time, so if you're looking to do lots of jobs once you're rolling, the pro plan might make sense because if you're doing a blog post or multiple assets at once, three concurrent jobs does start to slow you down. 100% your choice, spend what you feel like. I always like to start small and then adjust to what the potential looks like. Once you've added some fast hour processing to your account, you'll get a message directly from Midjourney. With your purchase, you also receive the ability to work in a private channel with the algorithm, which makes it way easier to follow what's going on. So now in the solitude of my own private channel, I can type slash, Imagine, you'll notice here it's asking for a prompt. Now sometimes it does glitch out and this prompt window doesn't come up. If you don't see this, it will not pass the query to mid-journey. So I'm gonna say, a long hair exotic cat dressed like Sherlock Holmes. And then I'm gonna hit enter and it is going to process my query and we'll see what we get here. You'll notice I described briefly what I want the cat to look like and how we should be dressed and we'll see what we get back here. As the algorithm is working, you will see it updating the quality and the percentage is shown on the top there. Once it's fully loaded, the percentage goes away and you get what you get. Now, in many ways, this is exactly what I was looking for. Not too bad. But for the sake of this example, let's say this little guy is my favorite, but I don't quite like his hat, so as I said before, each one of these is the upscale, which will make the small image into a fully rendered bigger image that sometimes changes a little. Or if you would like to see alternative variations, you can just choose the one you like and click the button. One, two, three, four. So I'm gonna click V3, and then we're gonna wait while it generates versions based on this little fella. Now you can see we're at 0% and it's just roughed it in and it continues to update, giving us slight variations of the cat that I chose. Now in this case, the variations are pretty slight, mostly in the lighting you can see here and the hats and maybe the medallion a little bit. So you can look at them. If you double click, it'll open it up. If you click to open it in a browser, it'll give you the full size view and you can zoom in and kind of get a closer look at the detail. I recommend doing this if you do like the image because often when you zoom in, you start to see some weird stuff. For example, in this one, the hair is a little bit weirdly wispy. This one is a little more blurry oil paint style. So I'm gonna go with this one. To do that, I close this tab, get back into Discord and click upscale one, two, three, version four. Once again, it will send that image and the query to their algorithm to generate it to a higher quality. As it says in the docs here, it's using a separate model to upscale the image and there are multiple models available. The default model is version four and it will bring back an image at 1024 by 1024 unless you specify alternative dimension. Back in my Discord channel, I have the final upscaled version of my long haired cat dressed like Sherlock Holmes. Now let's take a look and see how it looks compared to the previous. So you'll notice the rope here has changed a little, the hair has changed a little, and that's just kind of the nature of using this version of the algorithm. Now in version five of the algo, which is available to use, 
it creates these upscaled versions so that when you split them apart, you don't get those types of changes. If I like this one, I can favorite it and it will just send me a message to let me know that it's been done correctly and it will be available in my account as a favorite. I also have the option to do a light upscale redo, which just relooks at the image and attempts to add additional fine features. It's good for faces or surfaces that should have a lot of detail. There's also the beta upscale redo, which will double the size of the image and again, try to add a little bit more detail to what you've generated. You can also click make variations and it will do something similar to this where it takes the source image and tries to give you another one with some interesting twists on it. If you're an impatient person, then that's the tutorial. Go nuts, have fun, see what it can do. We've only really scratched the surface of what is possible here. So let's take a look at some of these specific commands you can use to tweak what the algorithm gives you back. As a director, you may not love the framing of what is generated, so you can try to provide more specific details about the type of shot that you're looking for. This particular list I found on Reddit, and it kind of outlines a lot of the standard cinematic shots, as well as some terms that this user found worked well for getting different visuals. So let's take a look at our cat image and do this and a few other modifications. I'm going to copy the prompt that I used and go down to the message box and again type imagine, paste it in there, and now we're going to edit it to say a full body glamour shot. Now the algorithm also recognizes different stylistic inputs, so you can also say things like stylize like the Mona Lisa. Then you just hit enter and wait. And this is where they get you to try and sell you more fast hours and concurrent jobs, because when you're really doing this, it is quite a bit of waiting, so you might want to have a book ready. Back here, my new prompt is coming in. You never really know which part of the prompt it's going to pick up on, and it takes a little playing around to start to figure out how to make it work. So in this case, I would say it's taking the Mona Lisa style more seriously than the glamour shot, and those are contrasting suggestions. So often it will take the one that it can make more sense out of. I gotta say, if I was doing like a character study or just trying to get some ideas going, this little guy here would definitely be the winner, and I would just take my idea forward with that. I can literally spend hours just coming up with crazy ideas and typing stuff in here. If you are playing with it and you make something crazy, send it to me on Twitter because I'd love to see it. Mid Journey is basically a blank canvas, and if you're trying to decide what to do, often a blank canvas can be intimidating because the possibilities are endless. So if you are struggling to get started, I found this mid-journey prompt helper that can make it a little easier to come up with ideas and understand all of the different functions that are existing within it. If you'd like to check it out, I've put the link in the description below. Similar to writing your prompts in Discord, you just type in what it is you would like to create, and then underneath there's all of these modifiers you can use to change the way the image is generated. I recommend kind of playing around with these. What you'll find is there's certain styles that speak to you and the project that you're trying to do, and then you may not need to use this as much, but as an introduction, this tool is a great way to figure out what's possible. The artist panel expands on what we just discussed, which is using different artist names to generate a stylized photo. You can also choose the type of camera that it is, whether it's using a macro lens, a panorama, wide angle telephoto, since I'm an elder millennial, I like to see them in 35 millimeter, like a Fuji film or something like that. You can also set the depth of field. So I'm gonna set it to shallow and see if it focuses on his face a little bit more. Then you click copy prompt, go back over to your Discord and paste it in. You'll see the prompt area is showing as black, so that means that it's going to work. So you can just hit enter and then you wait. And here's what we got. I am seeing a little bit tighter shot on the face here, so the depth of field probably brought that in. But to be honest, you never really know and you have to play around with it to find the sequence that gets you what you're looking for. If you don't like any of the images generated, you can just hit this refresh button and it will resubmit the query and bring you back four new images to evaluate. And as I've said in my other videos, this is the value that you as the human operator bring to this process. You are the tastemaker and the curator. You're just letting Mid Journey do the work. 
Back in my chat window, it's giving me four new examples and I've got to say, I love number three, but I think I'm gonna upscale number four. So I just hit the button and it runs the algo. Look at this serious little fella. So as you can see, even after just creating a few images, we have tons of messages in our window here. So fortunately, Midjourney is keeping track of everything that is generated on the web. So if you click the web button of any one of these images, it will ask you, do you wanna to go to Midjourney? You say, yeah. And then it brings you to a profile using your Discord login. This is the image that we just created, but if I click home, you'll see all of the images that I've created since I started this account. When you put your mouse over an image, it shows you the prompt that was used to generate that particular item. And if you click into it, you can see the image on its own. Also, if you click the three dots here, you can favorite it, add it to a collection to sort all of your different images. You can report it if it's someone else's and it's gross or you can add it to your profile, which whatever. You can change where the image is opened or you can copy the full command, the prompt, the job ID, or the seed. The seed is an alphanumeric code that lets Midjourney know which item you are talking about and you can use it to reference previous jobs. All of this information is also available in Discord and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. As I mentioned, using the seed of an image tells Midjourney something that you'd like to reference when creating a new job. So let's say that I wanna create a dog that kinda looks like my little cat friend here. If this was further back in time or I didn't wanna to go to my profile, there is a way to get the seed information directly from within Discord. You just go to the message with the image you'd like to reference, go to the add reactions and click the little envelope. By adding the envelope here, a new message is generated that gives you the information about the job, what you typed in, the job ID, and the seed that you want to copy so that you can reference it in your next image. So I'm gonna say, imagine a long hair exotic dog dressed like Watson from Sherlock Holmes, 35 millimeter, two hyphens, seed, and then paste the number from up here and hit enter. And once again, it will generate using this as a reference and pairing that with my prompt. And we wait. So we're looking for a partner for this guy. And as you can see, by giving it that seed reference and using a similar prompt, we've got some pretty decent candidates here. I feel like number two is pretty good and I'm gonna make some versions of that. The seed is particularly useful when you're doing things like blog posts, and we're gonna to get to that in a minute once I finish making this little sidekick. I'm gonna scan for irregularity. So in this one, you'll notice the perspective of the doors is a little bit off. This one, it looks pretty decent. I like the scarf. This one, I find the hair to be a little strange and the head is so sharp, it sits a little in front of it. Gives you kind of a disjointed look. So I'm gonna go with version three and we're gonna upscale that and call it done. So there, I just made a common mistake. I hit the version button instead of the upscale button because for some reason in my head, when you want the final, it would be the bottom. So you'll notice I've recreated more versions of this one. So always be careful when you're making these decisions because you are costing yourself time and money waiting for it to make something you don't really wanna use. In this case, I kind of like number two, but number three does look more Sherlock-y. So I'm gonna upscale number three again, and now we're gonna call it done. So with the basics out of the way, let's take a minute to look at how you can use this in your creative practice. One place I found it really helps move things along is with mood boards. I always like to have a visual mood set for the campaign or the project that I'm working on and gathering the material is often where I procrastinate. So I have been using Midjourney to give me a starting point and then I'll go out and add additional things to build it out once I've found that fun little starting point using the algorithm. So as an example, let's say we're selling a Sherlock Holmes themed set of doggy clothes and we wanna do a digital marketing campaign. As with all prompts, I'll type in imagine and then I'll describe the campaign by saying a six panel ad campaign storyboard for pet clothes. The pet clothes are based on Sherlock Holmes. 
I might also want to add some descriptions of the mood that I'm looking for. So I'll say gritty, English, and then I'll add some quality factors like HD film grain. And then we wait. You see, it kicked back some decent examples here. Each one has a little bit of different attributes. You can see the gritty vibe in the color schemes and the shadows. They don't all have six panels, but they do have a mood. Now, sometimes the whole grid will be a useful starting point for a mood board. Other times I'll pick a quadrant and refine that. Other times I'll just throw the whole thing out, but it does get the creative juices flowing. So looking at this one, I kind of like this layout stuff. I like the trench coat. You'll notice the words are in there, don't make any sense. So it basically does like a lorem ipsum type thing for you. I like the decorative font here. Decorative fonts are in right now. Maybe I could take it in that direction. I also like the hound in a trench coat. So the other option would be to take what I like about this and restructure my prompt with some of those words in it. So I'll take what I'd written before and just go imagine. I'll just add a few more keywords based on what I liked from the first item I generated. So decorative fonts, dog in trench coat, hit enter and wait one more time. And with those two extra things, you'll see we moved again closer to something that maybe I like. I like the dynamic lines in this one, but the general layout of number three is pretty cool. Very classic style. You can run this process as many times as you feel you need to, or you can just upscale one and run with it. In my case, I'm gonna go with number three. So I'll just hit upscale, it'll generate a bigger image. And then my next step is to do additional research with this as kind of an anchor point for the idea I'm exploring. It's kind of like having a very obedient collaborator where you can just toss ideas at it and see what it comes back with and just iterate. Sometimes it'll get it the first time, others you'll need to go back and forth with it. I do find that after three to five iterations, I have something solid that I can build off of and there's additional research I'll do outside of the Mid Journey app. In a previous video, I showed you how to create an AI blog generator and since most blog posts require images, Mid Journey can be a great option for generating some visual content to go in your posts. I have this blog post I generated of the best 90s metal songs and I want some images for the header and to put throughout the body so that it's a little bit more visually entertaining. The first thing that I'll do is generate a background for the header of my blog post. As always, we'll open with the imagine command and I've had good results by just telling it exactly what I want. So a blog header background. Now this is where your imagination comes into play. Since it's about metal, what I'm thinking is a blurry crowd of faces, so there's lots of room for the text to stand out in front of this background image. So now I'm going to describe that. Stadium crowd from the stage, low light, blurred faces, and I would be inclined to just try that, but up till now, all of our images have been squares, and a blog header tends to be more of a rectangle. So what I'm going to do is add an aspect ratio by hitting two hyphens and then aspect 16 by nine. Hit enter and just wait for it to come back. You'll see it's returned four different options and the aspect ratio is more suited for a blog header. Now, I don't really love any of them. So I'm going to copy the prompt and run it again. Add metal show, hit enter and wait. And while we're waiting, I just want to ask you to take a minute to like, subscribe, and consider buying me a coffee for explaining all this stuff to you. If not, that's cool. If you have questions, put them in the comments below. So these ones I'm liking a little bit better. The one with the band is probably the most interesting, so I'm just gonna run a version of that. Looking at what I got this time, I think number one is the winner as there's room for the text Plus this head will come through and kind of draw your eye to the word. So I'm going to upscale number one and we're going to call that the header for my blog post. With that up, I'll look back at my article here. Since it's just a basic list, I'm going to make another image just put in maybe after number two of someone head banging to music. So I'll go back to the mid journey channel, 
and say, imagine a metalhead banging their head to music, listening on AirPods. Now, if I want to reference this image, I will do what I showed you before, which is get the seed for this particular image, which is right here. I'll just say dash dash seed, put it in there. And that should give it some reference points to making it look similar to this image. Now, it's never perfect, and sometimes you do need to add additional descriptions to bring it closer to the image you're trying to get. So these are pretty wild. What I'm thinking is I don't really want them to be yelling. So I'm gonna copy this whole prompt. I also forgot to set the aspect ratio. So again, you need to kind of stay on top of all of your expectations of the image because it's going to take exactly what you asked for and give it to you. So double check your prompts before you hit enter or you're gonna get a lot of these cycles where you're not really getting what you're expecting. So I'm gonna add the aspect is 16 by nine. And I'm gonna say comma, no yellow. So this is a great example of it not always listening to every word you put in there. But in this case, I kinda like number four and number two. So I'm gonna ask for some versions of number two and just accept that it thinks metalheads yell. If you're struggling for ideas, again, I recommend you take a look at the Noonshot tool. It does help kind of get things going. You can also come back to the general channels, scroll through and look for interesting images and see what other people have typed to get that image. You'll see this one using ultra and photorealistic, also describing the lighting. So again, as the director, the more specific you can be about the technical aspects like camera, lighting, angle, the closer you're gonna to get to the answers that you're looking for visually. Up on the left here, Mid Journey Bot has sent me a message and that means that it has processed my image. So here's the versions it gave back to me for number two. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking the color doesn't really match closely enough to the darkness of this image. And so I'm going to ask for some versions of number four instead by just clicking the version button. So once again, we're gonna take a look at what we have here and look for irregularities. Now, hands and faces are often a little bit of a struggle for this algorithm. So you'll notice here, it looks like he has an extra tooth. This one, the thumb is a little bit wild. That hand looks okay, the lip is a little weird. The cord going across the eyes make it a little bit ridiculous. So of these, I think number three is probably the most accurate. What I'm going to do is upscale it and see if some of those issues get worked out when it reprocesses. So here's my upscaled version. Uh, there's still a little bit of weirdness in the mouth here. The headphones are a little bit sharper. That spike was there in the original and the lightning is much sharper, but I'm going to ask for a light upscale redo just to see if it can clean up some of the issues in the face and the perspective of the shoulders to neck is also a little strange to me. So here's the upscale. The skin you'll notice looks a lot nicer. The face is better, but we've got a weird glurb on the eye that doesn't really make sense. And this one, it looks like the eyes closed and this one, it looks, just kind of bad. So for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna use this. Now, if I was really particular about what I wanted here, I would continue to refine this prompt and see if I could get something that I love. But for the case of this example, I feel like this version before the light up scale is good enough. To download them, you can click, right click, save as, or click through to the web and use the little save icon and it'll put it in your downloads folder. So as you can see, it does do a lot of really interesting work, but it's not always perfect and it does take some back and forth to get to a result that is usable. Another thing to keep in mind is I've cut all the waiting time out of this video, but the total time it'll take to render these will vary depending on how busy the server is. Now, since you're paying for processing time, you might want to know how much time you have left. And you can see that by using another command. You just type slash info, hit enter, and it will give you how much fast processing time you have remaining. You'll also notice here that my visibility mode is public. If you do take a higher plan, you can change that to be stealth in which your images won't be displayed on your profile. 
To do that, you just open the settings by typing slash settings, hitting enter, and it'll bring back this list of buttons that you can use to configure how your instance of the algorithm is set up. If you always wanted to use version five of the algo, you can just click here. I prefer version four as of the making of this video. If you have a high enough plan, you can choose stealth mode, but as you can see, I currently do not have the proper payment plan for that setting. You can also change the base quality of your renders to be lower, to use less processing, or higher to see it in higher res as you're creating from your prompts. And I think that's where I'll cut this video for today. Just a nice little introduction to Mid Journey and how you can use it for some marketing practices. The best way to figure out what's possible is to just create an account and start running some prompts, reference what other people are using, and use the tool that I showed you to try out the different styles. If you do have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out. Otherwise, I wish you much AI generating fun and have a great day.